back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we take a midweek break to talk about all the fun Linuxy bits that we find interesting. This week is no exception because, you know, some people might find XFCE a little too fast and a little too stable, but no more worries because GNOME 324 will be shipping with Humbuntu 1704, and we're going to talk about the GPL. Well, more accurately, its decline. The Ubuntu hardware enablement stack is paradoxically ironical in the sense that it will disable hardware functionality, which was previously working, and NVIDIA pour some sauce on QT. Isn't that cute? Two uh, excellent pieces of software receive an update, uh, PCAR and Terminix. Or uh, if you were looking for something for your Pi, we'll also talk about Ubuntu Mates and Diet Pi. Diet Pi, that sounds absolutely horrifying. Let's get right into this. <laughs> Music Brains is updated. Picard, make it so. Yeah, so if you remember a few weeks ago, we had uh, Frezzo, the community manager from Music Brains. Mm -hmm. And Picar is one of those projects, which is also from Music Brains. And if you don't know about it, it's probably the best uh, music tiger ever made. So if you like have a lot of music and you need to sort it out and everything, use that. And it, it just received an update for, it's the first one in the past two years. So they, they have a bunch of uh, bug fixes. They have support for a couple more um, file formats. They, they have an option to, uh, to look for cover art in the local file folders. And some other good stuff. I mean, it's mostly bug fixes. And it's the last update before uh, Picard 2, which will be based on Q Qt5 and Python 3. So I will be looking forward to this one. Anyway, it's really the best music tagger ever made. So I'm kind of glad that you said that it's a music tagger because I read that <laughs> blog twice. Well written, mm -hmm. no typos. Grammatically correct, but after two reads, it's like I don't know what the software does at, at, at any point. It <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I don't really have local music. I have a folder that has some MP3 files on it, but they're mostly like weird ringtones I like to swap in and out of my phone. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good for people who have a lot of music locally, like I do. I mean, I have tons of music, okay. and it's All always right. cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it looks like Debian and Mozilla are done with their EP copyright thingy swinging, as it were, and the uh, the Foxfire and the Thunder Chicken are now going back into the repos, which is good. I mean, it's been, what, 10 years since they've had that spat with... Um, I can't remember his name from Mozilla saying that the way that they, the Debian team was packaging uh, Firefox was not compliant with their trademark. So they went back and forth. You can actually, uh, Ven just showed you the thread uh, for the video watchers. But if you're an audio listener, you can just find, find the links in the show notes and you can actually click through to see the entire conversation on the, um, on the mailing list. It's just a bunch of egos clashing with one another and it basically resulted in debian having to rebrand uh firefox to ice weasel and uh thunderbird to ice dove well that's gone away now apparently they fixed whatever it was that they um had messed in the first place and you can now just use regular Firefox and regular Thunder Chicken. Oh, they're basically which, saying the migration's relatively yeah. painless with this, though, right? You just need to copy the uh, the folders. Uh, the default configuration folder for Thunderbird, for instance, is .thunderbird in your home directory. So you can just uh, copy the contents of the isdov.isdov directory you, to you the don't have .thunderbird. You don't even have to do that because there is a script that will do it automatically for you. Oh, they're doing it automatically. All right. That's even yep. better. Uh, I don't know. It's just like, do, are, we, are we genuinely sitting here trying to pretend that somebody actually uses iStuff? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, um, 
I am not, not a big uh, Debian user on the desktop, but uh, I usually install Firefox from from some external repo. Uh, Thunderbird, I don't remember what I used to install. I mean, maybe I haven't tried it. Uh, yeah. The thing is, it's currently in the unstable repos. So unless you're running uh, SID, which you should, but uh, unless you're running you SID, to. you yeah. won't have uh, Firefox or Thunderbird before a while. I mean, it has to reach the, the testing repos and then the stable ones. So there, there's a, a reason they call them the stale repos. Moving on. <laughs> if, uh, you know, since we're talking about stale stuff, let's talk about the Ubuntu 16.04 LTS because 16.04.2 is now available to download. If you're already running 16.04, you'll get the updates that will just bump you up to the next version. That's fine. That's usual. Uh, and the biggest thing is the um, the new hardware enablement stack, which is basically the Ubuntu LTS allowing you to use a newer kernel version, a new X version, and a couple of updated packages that usually weren't exactly enabled for the LTS versions. They would just get security patches, maybe some functionality here and there if it was something major, but they usually wouldn't get any updates. Now, with the hardware enablement stack, they do. So, on Sunday, after we did uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly, I decided, you know what, it's out, I have free time, let's just try it. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> so my system was running fine. And after I updated the hardware enablement stack, well, I enabled it as it were, it messed my module blacklist because it removed um, Nouveau from the blacklist. So I had to fix that and then reinstall the NVIDIA drivers. It messed with my UDEV rules, which means that my uh, mistress here didn't uh, work in games anymore because they changed the UDEV rule, uh, the gamepad input line. For some reason, they decided it was a good idea to change that. And so I just reverted back to the uh, UDEV rules that Valve had suggested, and it was working again. It messed with my Exorg rules because I had two rules set up. One was for uh, disabling the mouse acceleration, and the other one was for enabling the forest full composition pipeline on the nvidia driver those two they were just gone they just deleted them who in the beep had the brilliant idea of doing that they even messed with my io scheduler why would you do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it seems like a very painful experience uh, meanwhile i'm just looking forward to updating to 1704 beta i that don't know I, much I more stable up, um, <clears throat> monday Less problems <laughs> Monday morning, and I, I just happened to look in the show notes for this show, and it was definitely like Neo Dodged Bullet GIF because that was my <laughs> project for Monday. Because I was like, why would you want to upgrade to your 4.8 kernel if you had a perfectly working system? And I was like, I will. And then I read Pedro's um, adventures with this. Uh, so, yeah, I think I'm going to hold off and just run my 16.04 for now because apparently getting that 4.8 kernel goodness is not worth the barrel of nope it comes with. And it was completely pointless because I just ended up replacing the regular Ubuntu kernels with the Zen kernel. And I even get slightly better performance when running Unity in Heaven 4, so I call that a win. Hmm. Yeah, I'm running the 4.8 kernel and happy with it. Okay, let's bring this up. I'm um, keeping on the Ubuntu thread. Uh, 17.04 will be shipping with GNOME 3.24. <laughs> No, not a huge fan of GNOME, but um, there's, there's a couple things with this. Uh, you know, not all three 24 apps will be available when this launches, but this does have a neat little feature called Nightlight, um, where the screen, you know, I'm sure you might be familiar with it if you run like Cyanogen Mod or something like that on your tablets. Depending on what time during the day, it will reduce some of the blue lights and kind of warm things up to help you go to sleep which is like a very roundabout way of just like downing a pint of sports water um <laughs> strider <laughs> yeah it's quite similar to things like redshift or stuff uh, stuff like this but the, the the most the thing i like the most about this is uh having the latest version of ggk on the system uh, that means I can experiment with all the new features and all that kind of stuff, which I couldn't always do with previous versions of Ubuntu when they were stuck with like uh, some old stuff, like shipping with Debian unstable. 
And sometimes that was quite annoying because there were some new widgets I wanted to test and I couldn't. Now it's the very latest, except for some programs like Nautilus. Uh, I, I like that a lot. It's one of the things, one of the main reasons why I want to upgrade to 1704 as, as soon as I can. So excited you're attacking the mic. Um, <laughs> the only reason I actually put this in the notes was because of the title. Because that was so misleading. Ubuntu 1704 will ship with GNOME 3.24. And I'm like, wait, they're replacing Unity? And then I started reading, no, no, there's just a, no, the, the package is due 324. And I'm like, really? Well, that's kind of a no it's big there's move. gnome shell in ubuntu okay the, the only thing i'm not really looking forward to is seeing which themes or extensions uh 3.24 will break and i think this will happen you read that all right pretty neat stuff so um nvidia didn't release no source yeah no that's uh, people really like to claim that nvidia doesn't care about open source, but the guys at QT got a little bit of a boon from NVIDIA. Namely, NVIDIA uh, just dumped on them the sauce to the um, NVIDIA Drive Design Studio, which is basically a an IDE, as it were, for developing stuff uh, in whatever language you want to. This one uses uh they the the things that they dump the sauce for in the cute qt project i don't want to call it cute uh <laughs> where the uh the 3d gui the runtime and obviously the qt integration bits conveniently so they will not share or open the sauce to anything in their drivers at least not for the current versions of the hardware after pascal has run has run its life Chances are they'll probably release the signed firmware images and the headers like they have done for Maxwell in the past. So, but yeah, no, it's good on NVIDIA for helping the QT guys. And Strider, uh, you had a bit in the notes that was actually kind of pertinent. Yeah, I mean, currently it's all uh, closed source and just for Windows. But they, they said it w they will open source uh, the, the, the IDE and... All, all that kind of stuff, and it will be on Linux at some point. When I have no idea, but yeah, they they definitely bring that to get that I quote. Know. I mean, from when they, they said, "Listen, man, and we only they they just got this, so you know that it's going to take some time to sort through the code, and they're going to try to mold it in to a form that they can publish, which that is no easy task. Anyone who's yeah, yeah. I've looked I've that. looked at the demo. Uh, I've looked at the demo uh, for the ID, and it does look really cool. I mean. That would be something I'd like to use at some points. Uh, yeah, it and it's a some... professionally developed IDE. It was created by NVIDIA for NVIDIA. Basically, it's their own stuff. And they just said, you know what? This is probably useful to other people. So, hey, QT guys, you do a lot of UI work. There you go. Have at. That's so, brilliant. Hey. Let's just hope they release it under the um, GPL. GPL. <laughs> oh, snap. That's right. You know him. You love him. John O'Bacon. Hey, he's writing a little thing about the decline of GPL with a question mark, which actually, yeah, it's definitely become a thing. We've definitely seen some MIT licensing, some Apache licensing taking over even BSD, as opposed to people coming out with, you know, GPL2, GPL3 type stuff. And he ponders, he's like, so what's going on here? It's like, well, you know, uh, several different companies are looking for new and exciting ways to make money, which you can't blame them. That's kind of the point of a company. And, you know, there's like, mm, GPL is not really working with a lot of things. But he hit on one particular thing, furiously scrolling through the article, trying to find it, because it's a good thing. I just remembered I put it in the notes. Um, mm -hmm. Bacon writes, you know, in recent years, we've seen a newer generation of developers from whom there is a less critical, and if I dare say, less religious focus on freedom when talking about <laughs> GPL. Just Android ring, developers hit, hit the bell. I was like, ding, 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 ding. You got it right there. Um, what do you think, Strider? We, we don't have like the uh, freedom zealots in the Linux community that we used to when we it's, were youths. We're, we're not talking about community here. It's more like big corporations, very big projects. And in some cases, yeah, the, the, the GPL can have some issues, it can be really cumbersome for some really large scale projects or industrial projects. And I can understand that. I mean, 
I really like the GPL. Uh, some of my projects are using the GPL, like Lutrace, for example. But for something a bit more like commercial or yeah, large scale, I mean, there, there's a reason why uh, the PlayStation, iOS, and OS X are based on BSD <laughs> and not Linux. And I think well, this is one of the reasons. Yeah, consoles and highly proprietary operating systems, the so-called walled gardens. For those projects complaining that the GPL is bad because they have a lot of software development secrets that they don't want to share, complaining about GPL there is a bit like complaining that using a Lamborghini Aventador to go off-road is a bad idea. Uh, of course, uh, and he shares the, the graph like at the very top of the article, you see that we're talking not 0.2% share drop. Now, there, like Van already said, uh, there's a bunch of people releasing new software now that doesn't comply to the GPL. And yeah, you know how many games and how many apps are available in the Android Play Store that don't use GPL? Yeah, it's, it's the increasing number of software that kind of makes those numbers. It's like the um, Linux usage market share on Steam. Just because it's been lowering doesn't mean less people are using it, just that more people in general are using the rest of the licenses. Yeah, and it, I don't think it's always a pertinent choice for like industrial stuff. It's not. You really have to have a legal team. If you have a big project, you need a legal team to go over the licenses and tell you which one is better. That's mm -hmm. just common sense. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you may remember him billions of years ago in the future's past. I sat down because I was bored and I was like, let's show everyone how to use the virtual camera that I set up that we're currently using right now. Mm -hmm. So over on Shot Realm Static, which is on our web zone, LinuxGameCast.com, um, I'm to Romlock posted a thing. He said, yeah. hey man, after seeing Vin's virtual webcam how-to late last year, I thought I could make a nice little project out of it since then. Lost his job, oh, but I made a thing anyway, which is a good way to look yeah. at things. And that thing, it flows right off the tongue. It's X112V4L2, and it's over here on GitHub. Basically thrown a little gooey around my, um, uh, then just like opening up a bunch of consoles and looking all hackers and stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's kind of logically laid out. Um, so yeah, you can use it FFmpeg. You can create a virtual cam that'll work with basically anything that'll take a camera input. Strider, what do you think? Are you impressed? Nonplussed? Uh, yeah, I've tried it. The pro it launched fine, but the thing is, I didn't have the VLoopback uh, module, so I couldn't really use it. Neither and did I, I when I started the show today, because <laughs> I upgraded my kernel. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to compile that that um, module to fully test it. But what's, what I like about this thing is it's all Python and GTK, and you know, I would, I could use a coder that knows GTK and Python, but it seems that Romlock, the the guy who wrote this software, didn't have a really good experience with GTK. Yeah, and, no. Yeah. Uh, he. <laughs> I'm not, not so going bad. to repeat his exact words, but let's just say he wasn't a fan. He did like Glade, mm -hmm. but not GTK three. But yeah, no, it's good because it provides a GUI for setting your virtual cam with like different uh, inputs. Say you want an input on your desktop and you want an input just uh, X11 grabbing a specific window. You want a specific screen region. You can set all that through the GUI. So that's that's awesome. All yeah. right. So um, Mr. Fashion Styly Pants wants to talk about his fancy new terminal. Yes, and it's as fancy as it gets. Uh, it's Terminix, so it's what I've been using for the past months. When after I had some little problems with uh, Terminator, which was the terminal terminal emulator I was using, and this is pretty much the same thing. It's got panes. Uh, it's got like uh, uh, bookmarks. It's got a quake mode where it will uh, slide off the top of the screen. Uh, it's got search, search features. It's pretty much the most evolved terminal, terminal emulator you can get right now on Linux. So this comes like a, in a new version. It's 1.5. And they, they have uh, like added the bookmarks uh, 
supports they have um, a new notification uh, feature where it will detect inactivity on a terminal and send you a notification on, about this. This is very cool. Uh, it will. They, they added a bunch of other options, we, which are like, all pretty good. If you're not using it, like give it give it a try. It's a very good um, terminal emulator. Um, yeah, uh, Strider. All that fancy talk about Python earlier, and uh, now you're using just Terminix. I mean, there's a terminal emulator out there written in Python. It's called Terminator. Oh, Why aren't oh, you using that? Because I really, but really, don't care what <laughs> a program is made of. I mean, it could <laughs> be made in basic. If it's good, I'll use it. I don't care what the language is, but it's notable for using the language D, which is uh, rare enough to be noted. Um, I've I had a look at the source code, and D is a pretty neat language. Um, it's not really used a lot because there is now this, everyone's going with Go or Rust, but still, I mean, looks neat. So yeah, uh, so, if you're um, looking, is it better than cool retro term? <laughs> cool. Ah, yes, retro let's term use a GLX based terminal. Cool. That's a good idea. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't get very far. I remember Strider had a thing with the retro term, and I was like, all right, I'll try it in an app get, and it was like seventy megs. I was like, nope. <laughs> it's only a oh, you don't have seventy megs. I'll, I'll send you a hard drive. Send, send, oh, send me about TrueFiddy. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, before we get out of here, uh, 410's out, maybe. 410, yeah, so that's a new uh, stable release for the for the Linux kernel. Well, almost stable, because it won't, will only be stable with the 4.10.1. But this is this has already landed in the um, uh, Ubuntu 17.04 uh, release, so that's very good. It's mostly a bunch of new hardware supports, and performance improvements. So they have this uh, new uh, features for, uh, uh, they have a support for a bunch of new ARM platforms, including uh, the Raspberry Pi 3, a bunch of new features um, concerning the Nuvo drivers. So now they may be on the competitive edge, not, I mean, I, I don't say that Nuvo drivers will be fast, but they will be less slow. Yeah, and one of the things that really, well, they've updated the uh, the article now, but at first the article didn't say, it only said that the AMD GPU DRM driver had some new fixes, but now they have added that there's an ADM Zen code mainlined. Now that's actually the AMD Ryzen bits, which were the original leak that came out about Ryzen, was the fact that the code had been introduced to the the microcode more specifically had been introduced to the uh, Linux kernel and now it's available in 4.10 and again AMD beating the release of the kernel or the drivers to the actual hardware I mean Ryzen if everything goes to plan will only be out on March 2nd so it's already in there AMD are you feeling yep. okay um, Come yeah, on, I mean, they're, tell they're everyone how bad good Zen is and how much you hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't care. I mean, but if you're going to get a Ryzen, then you pretty much have to install Ubuntu 17.04. Okay, sounds or like just a plan. Um, I'll eventually, I'll probably, um, when, when I'll update to 4.10, probably when we get another LTS, because that, that's probably when that's going to happen. <laughs> Hey, Pedro, um, maybe I really like the show and I'd like to support the people who make it possible. Well, if you are an insane person and you are very irresponsible with your finances, we will be very glad if you go to linuxgamecast.com and you hit the support button and you kick some wet, stinky cashews our way. Oh. You can do so. Uh, well, you don't need to give us money directly you can use our amazon affiliate links it'll just take a little bit off of whatever you purchase it won't cost you anything extra and we'll get some wet stinkies out of that you can also give us a one-time donation through the paypal donato buttons or if you really want to show how responsible you are you can go to patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast and do like those 98 insane people that 
keep giving us money and we love them hey man it's kind of like a two for it's not just this show we do we do this a uh, wild cra- you think this this, this show is kind of edgy <laughs> tune in saturday <laughs> uh, you get you get two a week for that but we, we got some beautiful beautiful party patreons to thank this week indeed son. mr craig hibbard up this pledge uh mr matt clark also up this pledge and renee yeller up yeller up Probably Kjellerup. I don't know. I uh, thought you also, were pretty boss with that first pronunciation. I was like, I wouldn't have gotten that. He also uh, updated his pledge. So thank the three of you. Thanks. Big, big thanks to the three of thanks you. Thanks to all 98. And, um, yeah. beautiful. and hey, if you're about Patreon, check it out. We got some rewards up there. You can get some early show note access for this show and Saturday show. We got some not really exclusives, but you, you'll definitely get them earlier, like a live stream. We have a pre pre shows and on Saturday, which isn't really about gaming. It's just the three of us um, talking about what's going on just in Linux in general with some gaming stuff in there. And that's just for, you know, uh, four quarters a week. So 16 quarters yep. a month, if you can throw that in extra fun stuff. And we just recorded a new left for Brad series where we all get together and play some left for dead too, and say horrible things while trying to communicate with each other. And that always, <laughs> always breaks down into us killing each other. So it's, it's kind of fun. Beautiful. All right, let's get into that a slice of pie, what we do. So, you mm-hmm. want to mate 1604.2. Strider, tell us about it. Yeah, um, so I got the, the update from uh, Martin Wimpress, uh, who is on the Oh, you got the update? Team. You hijacked my update. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he, he was asking if we could talk about this, and sure we can. I mean, it's uh the so it's sixteen oh four dot two for the Raspberry Pi two and three. Uh so it's got this uh, new update. Uh basically it's uh, using the the um, the ARM HF base of uh, Ubuntu. It's mm-hmm. not just based on the snappy core uh That's probably for the best. <laughs> yeah, maybe I mean if it if it's going to be an LTS, you want to keep the stable stuff right now, yeah. and it's got uh, like a bunch of new features and a bunch of uh, updated software, uh, but the kernel isn't one of them because it runs a pretty old kernel. I was surprised by this, like four four point one. Well, that's really not that different from say Android devices that also run on ARM exactly, exactly uh, yeah. SOCs. So yeah, you, there's probably something with the newer kernels that you need for the raspberry pi that doesn't work so well i'm mm-hmm. guessing but yeah this is uh ubuntu mate if you want to use your raspberry pi and have a really nice uh desktop and it's probably the best well i'm kind of biased i can't say that but <laughs> it's probably the best uh desktop variant of the ubuntu family right now <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's quite good. Yeah, and if you want to to have something working out of the box, really easy to set up, this is one of the best options. If you don't want to to have something like that easy and the working out of the box, yeah. but if you want something more customizable, then you might want to have a look at Diet Pi. So this is something I found out while looking for something called AmiBerry, which is an Amiga themed distribution for the Pi. And so Diet Pi, it's a, a, dis- a base for a distribution where you can install pretty much everything you want. Uh, it's based off Debian, but it's much lighter than... Um, and what does it run on Strider? Did you say everything? Yeah, pretty everything. much everything. <laughs> it's for the Raspberry Pi, but also pretty much a board you can think of. So the Odroid... Uh, and all that kind of stuff. The banana the pies, pies, the, the banana, pie, banana pie, yes. The orange pie, the ALO, and there's even a VM image. And you don't even have to think yep, twice exactly. about this because any um, pie distribution that has the uh, phrase lightweight justice anywhere on their web zone, you probably just need to install that one. <laughs> yeah, and you can install a bunch of uh, software right after the first boot. It will ask you, like, it will go through uh, a text-based uh, wizard and you can install uh, desktop environments like uh, Mate or LXD or XFC or you can install media servers like uh, Plex or stuff like this or BitTorrent clients or web servers or games and there's even options to boot directly into into stuff like uh, Kodi or even games. You can boot into Descent if that's your thing. 
you have a, you can have a, a machine dedicated to to the game descent. Well, I mean, I, I don't see what your problem okay. is with that. And one thing to point, I mean, it's a 400 megabyte image. So, I mean, that, that's wicked. Set. That's like dang small Linux, son. So, um, <laughs> we're running out of time. How can people contact us? Well, if you want to send some disparaging remarks our way, linuxgamecast.com. You hit the contact button on the nav bar. It's pretty easy. Make sure to pick LWDW from the little drop downy thing. Fill out the form and send us your message. It's pretty easy. Someone... Figured it out this week. Inertia. Um, they had to say, ah, Ryzen. So here's the thing. I use a bunch of CPU feature set stuff to support IOMMU and Vertio Passthrough. Uh, I work with LibVRT uh, and network stuff. Feature set compatibility with Intel is important and often lacking in the Optron range. That's the uh, AMD pr uh, server processor line in comparison to the Xeons, that Intel's. And uh, MOBO chipset feature support as well as CPU support go hand in hand. None of the currently released AM4 stuff appears to mention two features which are must-haves. IO MMU support and increasingly th Thunderbolt 3, which means not just eGPU support, but also QSFP Plus breakout. Okay, so the thing with Ryzen, besides the increased IPC performance that I know I'm looking forward to, uh, is the chipset interaction that it does. Uh, it doesn't have, it doesn't leave as much in the chipset like Intel or the Bulldozer series did. Uh, a lot of the, the stuff that was previously on the chipset is now in the processor die, uh, which is the case with uh, IOMMU support. I don't honestly know uh, how IOMMU V2 support is going to be handled, if at all. But I know for a fact that Thunderbolt 3 is not available on the um, on either the AM4 chipset or the Ryzen processor itself, because that is Intel technology and AMD. Well, they're not going to be paying Intel even more money just to license more of their well, stuff. Well, I, I, I could see some of the motherboard manufacturers doing it. They could, yes, they could. They could implement that if they wanted to. But then again, that's up to the um, the hardware manufacturers. Uh, but let's be honest, Thunderbolt 3 is just a slightly more focused uh, with uh, less latency implementation of USB 3.1 Type-C. Uh, if the external GPU market does take off, which it probably won't, uh, USB 3.1 will give you very similar bandwidth, just with a slightly higher latency. I don't know what QSF, uh, QSFP Plus breakout is, but... Yeah, I don't know. Chances are it's probably going to work with USB 3.12. I don't know. I, I definitely got a solid laugh when you were talking about, you know, the uh, external GPU market because that's been <laughs> taking off or going to take off since like 2002. <laughs> and it, it just really hasn't done a thing. Strider, do you get any last words on this? Yeah, have fun with your like mid-range, low, low-end uh CPU you're going to get. See, Strider's having a good time. He's pretending that he <laughs> bought the most expensive i7 on the market when it was out. Which he did No, not. it's not the most expensive. It's like... But you see, if price. I do the same thing with an AMD product, it's completely different. In the, in the, <laughs> right? right? No, I mean, you're you're going to change your CPU. This like, is why I love you arguing with him. He has no good points. <laughs> <laughs> just just by the, the 1800 that's all. Okay, beautiful people. That's going to be it. That's going to do us. And uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, Pedro and I will be back Saturday. It's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be Indeed. awesome. Uh, social media is real quick. At Vinstone. Um, Twitter nets plus Vinstone G+. Plus. I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me at an account four on Twitter or plus Pedro Mateos on Google+. Plus. And I'm Matthew Commander. You can find me on Twitter at Strikor on Google+. Plus. Matthew Commander. Okay, that's brilliant. We'll see you Lutris. next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Bye.